Hiya, and welcome back to No More Future, the game that teaches us that if you are a robot, then you're basically exempt from any and all laws that the United States of America creates. And you can beat the shit out of police officers and get away with it. It has been a long time since we've actually gone through this. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Hopefully our save doesn't break. And the lies begin. Alright, alright, alright. Is it, is it gonna break? Yes! And welcome back to the show. Sheesh, those ads just keep getting longer and longer. Am I right? But the products keep getting better and better too, don't they? They most certainly do. A young... F A young fox and an elderly lynx come converse amiably in the midst of a spacious room, an indistinct audience seldom reacting to whatever they say. It starts off simple enough, bland product placement, posturing for normal conversation, some bad jokes. Lots of bad jokes. Nothing unusual for a late morning talk show, you suppose. Cheesiness is part of the reason people like them. Right? Eventually, after some time, the script begins to branch out in a new direction. And speaking of products, the next one the next one we're going to talk about has been on everyone's shopping list for a long time. It's the big if everyone's talking about with their friends. The Christmas present no one's quite sure they're ready to unwrap. Oh dear. You're not talking about that, are you? That I am. Today's topic of the day is synthetics. The older host visibly shudders upon hearing that name, in spite of his younger co-worker's enthusiasm. Blah. I feel shivery already. Oh, come on. Synthetics aren't that scary. They're like steel-clad, life-size dolls with a mind of their own. Doesn't that sound exciting already? Well, that's one way to describe you, all right. Clearly, you're not the only one offended by it, albeit for different reasons. Except their minds are supposed to be human minds. Doesn't that rub you the wrong way? Freaky-looking androids running around town every day with real people living inside them. It's like the setup to a horror movie. Yup, they're going in that direction, alright. Were you following this program for the fun of it, if there truly is such a thing, you'd have turned it off right there and then. But you've reason to believe things might get more interesting eventually, so you try and tune, all, tune off all the garbage for now, and hope it won't take much longer to get to the good part. Androids taking over the streets. How's that going to bother you when you live under a rock all of your every day already? I don't know. Maybe you're right. I do know very little about synthetics after all. What a happy coincidence. Then, then that we have the head of the project in the studio with us today. Wait, what? Everyone say hello to the most talked about woman on the news these days, Dr. Mary Shelley. A familiar feline enters the hall from the left, amidst lots of weird visual effects the audience cheers, and an uncharacteristically wonky walk you've never seen her do before. <laughs> You'd feel quite a bit quite a bit of secondhand embarrassment for her, if she wasn't feeling more than enough first-hand embarrassment already. Nope, she's at least getting paid for this gig. Yo! Yo! That! That scares- that- that is beautiful. That is- that-, that I, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. now. just- just- Hi, it's me. I'm the woman everyone has nightmares about. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Shelley and I'm an alcoholic. The female host laughs at Mary's joke alongside the audience, albeit in a practiced way that doesn't feel quite natural. Not even a moment of letting the scientists sit down, the conversation begins again. Well, good morning, Dr. Shelley. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Hiya. Oh, the... Pleasure is all mine, I assure you. You're not sure if that was her poking fun at the situation or not, but some of the audience chuckled nonetheless. The hosts are not as amused, unsurprisingly. Anyway, we invited you here to talk about your latest invention. My special garlic lemon vodka super blender? But I thought I kept that project secret. <laughs> that sounds... Equally concerning, but no, actually. Oh, hiya. We're talking about synthetics, the latest innovation from the great minds of Pandora. Mary chuckles at the woman's almost robotic words, a curious look on her face. <laughs> ah, that one. 
Sorry, it's been so long since I've been asked about it. I'd practically forgotten about it. But yes, all jokes aside, I'd love to share more about our newest inventions with you guys. In fact, I'd be delighted. Just as soon as your buddy gets a hold of himself anyway. As if on cue, the camera focuses once again onto the links in the corner. He's half hidden behind the desk, staring daggers into the scientist in a way that feels as exaggerated as it gets. Keep your hands off my brain, demon! <laughs> yeah, hiya. You're quickly starting to pick up on why shows like these need a live audience. If there wasn't laughter every time these dudes made a joke, you would never realize they were trying to be funny. Mary tries her best to retain her composure in spite of the situation. Or maybe she's just following the script that they are, and in her own way. Oh dear. Oh dear, I'll have to start from the very beginning, won't I? Please, if you may. Luckily, what follows is something you're a little more accustomed to. Perhaps a little too much. Just the usual string of questions you hear the feline answer time and time again. Who she is, what she does, how long she's been working on the project. I'm going to bed feeling sleepy in the RTF surgery's pain and not only. Aww. Oh well. How long she's been working on the project? Hiya. They then go into the meat of the synthetic project. Sort of. It's more or less the same pitch Mary gave you when she visited you on your deathbed, almost a month ago. Not much time has passed since that fateful moment in your life, yet it feels like an eternity's come and gone all the same. Although, that's probably just the boredom that you feel right now getting the best of you, if you had to guess. Speaking of that one synthetic everyone's talking about, what can you tell us about this Isaac? You're suddenly snapped back to reality by one of the fox's questions, taking you completely by surprise. Before you can wonder if this is where it's all heading to, Mary begins to answer. Well, what can I say about him that I haven't already said before? He's just another synthetic, same as all the others before him. Although, I bet he considers himself to be a bit more dashing than the rest if I had to guess. I'm sorry? You ask out loud, from the comfort of your seat, knowing full well none of them can hear you. Out of all the things Mary could have said, does she really need to say, well, that? This better be part of that nonsense script they're reading, or else. As you begin to think of the atrocities you can commit on that cat next time you see her, the conversation moves on from where you'd left it. Well, he certainly is different. I mean, he's out here, while the rest of them are elsewhere. Why in the world is that? What's so special about him? The feline takes a moment to answer that question, looking almost genuinely surprised to receive it. Well, you should know Isaac was particularly insistent to go back to his old life. More so than all the others combined. I just thought it'd be fun to fulfill that kid's wishes. Or perhaps enlightening is the better word. We have already learned so much from seeing him interact with others, and there's so much more yet to discover. Just thinking about the potential of that kid and this technology has me rather excited. You're a little surprised by Mary's enthusiasm, so starkly different it is from how she was talking up but a few moments earlier. This doesn't feel like a script anymore. Maybe the time for blindly following the teleprompter is over, and the scientist finally the scientist is finally allowed to answer questions with whichever way she feels. Of course, that only goes for her, as if despite the cat's passion, the professional contrarian, contrarian, ah, contrarian raises his grumpy voice once again. Well, what if I don't want to interact with this, Isaac? Why should I or anyone else have to participate in this science experiment of yours, Dr. Shelley? And just like that, all the warmth disappears from Mary's face and all the joy from her voice. Oh, I don't know. It might help you grow a pair of balls, that's for starters. <laughs> Damn. After a brief collective gasp, a deep silence encroaches on the studio. The hosts look as bewildered as you are, more genuinely than ever before. You have a feeling this little outburst from the cat wasn't planned by the show's writers. Before anyone can react, the scientist quickly takes over the conversation. 
I mean, can you imagine what it's like for the poor kid being surrounded by people, Haya, who view him as nothing more than a scary monster? I don't think it'd be pleasant for anyone, much less someone who literally endured dying just to get to this point. The old man tries to interject. B but what if he starts running around killing people? Yeah, that seems to be the general worry right now. But come on, it's been almost a week now, and hardly anything has happened. People have taken photos of him at the train station, in grocery stores, at restaurants. Like we all just decided he was some kind of celebrity, instead of a normal kid with wants and needs like everyone else. I'm just saying, if what he truly wants is to kill us all, it's gotta be pretty low on his list of priorities. The hosts exchange some worried gazes, which are barely picked up on the camera. The fox tries her best to wrestle the reins of the show back from the unexpectedly feisty feline in front of her. She has no chill. None whatsoever. She is just like... Fuck you. Well, I could definitely attest that Isaac doesn't look half bad from up close. I actually snapped a picture of him just the other day while I was visiting some relatives in Bloomberg. A high-quality picture of you appears on the screen behind her, seemingly taken at the train station while you were waving Natalie goodbye. Hiya. Um. Well. I was at my grandmother's. And I just... I don't know, I, I took that opportunity to take a bit of a break. You're probably meant to feel surprised or confused right now, and wonder how this woman managed to sneak a picture without you noticing. Instead, you told me to eat the bug. I didn't want to eat the bug. I didn't want to eat the bug. It was a stink bug. It was a stink bug. I didn't want to eat the stink bug. I didn't want to eat the stink bug. So I didn't eat the stink bug. It ran me out of the house. Nah, nah, nah. It ran me out of my room, <laughs> if anything. A good break is always good. Yeah, no, I, I slept. I slept. And just did nothing for three whole days. Instead, all you feel is sadness and rage as you recall what you were going through at the time it was so carelessly taken. Hmm, I have to admit he does look pretty good from this angle. Mary's smile returns to her lips, as if her rant just now was nothing but a little aside to, at, to the conversation at large. You actually ate a bug today? Congratulations. Congratulations. The fox is quite pleased to realize this. Live in fear of the bug. Ah! No! No! I'm already fearful because, like... Okay, okay. So, apparently... So, apparently, like... The motherfucker flew into her mouth. Oh, no! Oh no! I feel so sorry for you. Like you were just like you were just like eating you were just like eating a taco. You were just like doing your own thing, eating a taco, and then it just like flew into your mouth, and you're like, ah! Yesterday you slapped the mosquito and <coughs> I don't know. I I I live in like the no 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 like. Like, I fear because, like, okay, so apparently, you eat, like, <laughs> like, eight spiders a year because you're, like, sleeping and your mouth is hanging open and it just, like, crawls into your mouth and down your throat and then dies. Yeah, no, I live in fear because, like, I am pretty sure I sleep with my mouth closed. I'm 99%, I'm 99% sure that I sleep with my mouth closed. Um, I am fearful of the day because, like, it, it just, it just, like... Just, like, it, it, it's all collective. Like, I'm just, like, asleep as, as an old man. I'm an old as hell man. I'm, I'm an old as fuck man. Just, like, sleeping. Mouth wide open. And then, oh my god, cupcake layers. Just mouth wide open. And then just, like, every single spider. And just, like, eh, it just, like, just crawls down my throat. And, I'm, and I wake up to this horror. And I'm there. <laughs> I swear to god, that's going to happen one day. The fox is quite pleased to realize this. <laughs> I know, right? I always knew I had a talent for photography. Hiya. <laughs> oh my god. 
Well, well, and enjoy your enjoy your protein. Like, like, okay, okay. Spiders are not that bad. Spiders aren't that bad, unless you are in the shower and then they, like, you're doing your own thing. You're you're taking a shower and then they just start crawling up your leg. You look down and you see it crawling up your leg and you're just like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 that that that's honestly terrifying <laughs> but enough about me what about him do you think the world's ready for human synthetic relationships yet dr shelley wow <laughs> wow wow what what an amazing offer what an amazing offer um um how about no you have to rein yourself in really hard to not slap the computer's screen while you close all the tabs You've heard enough is what you reckon. That conversation, if you can even call it that, was going absolutely nowhere in spite of Mary's best efforts. Like, like that guy just like, like that guy just like shows up and is just like, hi, would you like to buy follows? And I'm just like, ha the, You're going to the, the Twilight Zone. Ha ha. That conversation, if you can even call it that, was going absolutely nowhere in spite of Mary's best efforts. You have to give that woman credit where it's due. She did try her best to make a statement and improve your image, just like she claimed she would. Even if it wasn't effective. Sadly, all those people wanted was some cheap gossip and questionable jokes. Not even Mary's charisma could salvage that shit show. You finally let yourself fall unceremoniously on your couch, feeling completely drained. The Shadow Realm, you're sending them to Tampa, Florida. Oh no! Oh no! Nah, send them to Texas. Someone has seen arachnophobia. I have not seen arachnophobia. I don't think I I don't think I even have arachnophobia. Um, I might. I'm not too sure what fears I have, what phobias I have. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm scared. I am absolutely scared to death of wasps. Like, bumblebees, honeybees, yeah, those are totally fine, just do your own thing. But wasps, they just, like, buzz right up to you and stab you. They, they stab you in the arm with their left ass cheek for no goddamn reason. Clearly, I do not understand how insects work. I obviously do not understand how insects work because, like, I am convinced that a wasp has a little needle in their left ass cheek and they're going to stab you in the arm with it. They are going to stab you in the arm with a needle in their left ass cheek. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, just, just send them to Florida. Just send them to Florida. Have them hang, have them hang out with Florida, man. Florida's hilarious. Flo Florida man is hilarious. Not I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a while since I've been to Florida, and even then, it was only to go to Disney. Um. Yeah, yeah. Um, um sorry, sorry, I offended you. <laughs> Your mind is a world of dumb questions without answers. Yet you can't help but tackle them nonetheless. I swear, what is Mary even doing appearing on shows like these? Ah, uh, hard parts on the outside, forbidden juice inside, that's bugs. I get that she wants to try and help out however she can. Public perception of synthetics included. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was worried a bit. But wouldn't it be better if she just focused on her research instead? I just can't understand what game she's playing anymore. The stress and uncertainty plaguing your mind make you feel as empty as a music player with no songs. And in truth, this latest stunt from the feline has little to do with it all. It's been almost three full days since Natalie dropped you off at the train station, and you've had a lot to think about in the time since. See, like, like, bees are totally fine. Like, they do their own thing. 
If uh, they are definition fuck around, find out. If you're gonna fuck around with the bee, you're gonna find out. But with wasps and hornets and yellow jackets, like they're you're just like you're just like doing your own thing. You're you're in the you're in the park. You're in the park eating a picnic. You're you're eating you're eating a delicious sandwich in the in the park at at a picnic with like your your pets. They're just like enjoying the sunlight. You're sitting in the shade on a on a little checkered blanket eating a eating a sandwich, and like and like a, a wasp or hornet or yellow jacket or whatever the fuck is there just shows up it just shows up and is like hey i'd like a bite of that sandwich you're like no no this is my sandwich fuck off and then they proceed to stab you in the forehead 32 times because they want your goddamn sandwich and they do that using their using a needle in their left ass cheek Although I will say I actually did kill a wasp today and I felt very accomplished. Yeah, no, I, I killed a wasp today and I felt very accomplished. Like, like, bees are just like, oh, can, can I, can I pollinate this flower? Am, am I allowed to pollinate this flower? And you're just like, oh, go ahead, bee. And a wasp is like, I, and a wasp is like, go to hell. And you're like, I will see you there. Things like, things like the events of the past week, your brief encounter with the owners, Jasper and Bradbury's discussion. That motherfucker, the motherfucker who cuts wasps with scissors, he is doing a goddamn service to the world. And I think wasps are important because they prevent, like, bees from overpopulating. I feel like I feel like wasps are important in the sense that they keep like certain species of insects and whatnot from overpopulating. And there's also Haya. They they keep them from overpopulating and yeah. How the fuck did I go off on a on like a whole on a whole like spiel about bees and wasps? How how the hell did that happen? Yeah, Haya. How 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 did that happen? How did I get here? All right, back to the game. <laughs> Maybe. And Natalie's blatant lies and misdirection. There's no denying... Oh, my dog just came in. Hi! Hello! Hello! What are you doing? Say, say hello. Say hello. Don't lick the microphone. Say hello. Ah! What are you doing? L lay down. Lay down. Ah! Good boy. Ah! 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 If you're also going to be here, lay down too. Go lay down. There's no denying it anymore. As much as it pains you to admit it, something's amiss with your new friend's behavior. The way she showed up at New Relay's train station all of a sudden. The things she told you on the train. Give the good boy my money. I don't have any cash on me. I only have card. And I'm not giving him my card. You wish you could see the dog. You wish you could see the goddamn nerd that's on my bed right now. He's like a he's like a pit bull. He's like he's like a pit bull hybrid thing. He's like laying on the bed right now, just doing his own thing. I'm I'm giving him I'm I'm scratching his belly right now. Come on, come on. Ah! He's like he's like he's like doing his own thing, just laying on the bed. Go all right, alright, go 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 to sleep. Go to sleep. Go, go to sleep. Specific chord she used, like, abomination of science, for one. That's what she claimed you weren't, in an attempt to raise your spirits. She made it seem like she was trying to disprove your arguments and dispel your fears. Only thing is, you never used that word to begin with. Of that, you're sure. Only Jasper ever addressed you as such, and she was never in the same room as him when he did so. You never told her he'd call you that before, either. Somehow, she knew the contents of your discussion with Jasper and Bradbury in advance, even when she claimed not to. Somehow, she knew you were going home on your own before you even, you'd even told Mary. Somehow, you'd never put two and two together until the morning after the fact. They're recording my every move. It was the only possible explanation, and somehow it evaded you until that very moment. Probably because you didn't even want to consider it at first. But that was the only way to account for all the strangeness that had happened recently. 
It explained why Mary had footage of her fist fight the other day. Even how she and Jasper appeared so quickly after Bradbury first revealed himself to you. And that's only scratching the surface of the iceberg. God, this is so messed up. Why would they even do something like that? Without even telling me, no less. Unless those few cryptic words Mary shared with you when she first introduced Natalie to you were any indication. She'll stick by your side, wherever you go, and will be constantly aware of where you are, what you're doing, and how you're feeling. At the time, you took it as nothing more than Mary being Mary. A simple joke meant to mess with you and her junior both. You couldn't imagine she was actually being honest for once. And now that you do, what of it? What are you supposed to be doing about it? That's what you've been trying to figure out ever since. Stuck in your apartment, dreading any other place but your own. Laying motionless on the couch, surfing the web, eating snacks. Evading the problem. If nothing else, your sudden bout of anxiety did provide an excuse to distract the scientists who regularly called you to make sure you were alright. Every time you heard Mary and Natalie's voices, they sounded just like they did a few days ago. Jovial and kind-hearted, yet well-meaning and careful. Perhaps too careful. If you're meant to know that you're being spied on, they're definitely not mentioning it often enough. Or at all, for that matter. Maybe it'd be easier to accept this reality if they were honest about it with you, but the fact that they keep acting as though everything between you is fine when it isn't is just... unsettling. I mean, it's not like I'm entirely opposed to the idea. If this is necessary to help their research efforts, I'm alright with losing a few little bit of privacy. I just wish they were straightforward with me about it. Why all the lies and deceit when we could just be honest with each other? Unless I'm somehow missing something. Knowing yourself, you probably are. Or maybe not. And your friends really are as bad as they seem right now. Who knows? So many doubts, so little clarity. You get up from the sofa, shaking your head at your sore lack of the answers, looking for distractions. You head to the mini fridge and open it, hoping to find a cold soda or two to calm your nerves with. But it's entirely empty, save for one last bottle of cold water. Well, for someone who's supposedly never hungry or thirsty, you sure did a number on your fridge in the past few days. A little upset, you fetch the water and head back to the sofa, pulling the cap off the bottle and emptying it all in one stroke. As the fresh liquid courses through the back of your throat, you can't help but grimace. My family wants nothing to do with me. The heads of Pandora and the, and the FBI act crazy every time I see them. And if that wasn't enough, I can't even trust my own fucking friends. Yep. I don't think it gets much worse from here. Foreshadowing! I swear to god that is foreshadowing right there. You have a long engage to the mini fridge in the corner of your room in the corner of the room, its emptiness perceptible even with its door closed. This really isn't how you imagined your life would be when you decided to become a synthetic. It's not what you want it to be. And the thought, whilst not pleasant, is strangely rousing in a way. I mean, it's not like I need to refill it or anything, but I really need an excuse to get out. I want an excuse to get out. To the supermarket we go. Ha ha. I can't keep spending my days like this, doing nothing and feeling like shit. At some point, something's gotta change. You can't recall the last time you spoke to Apollo, Daphne, Nem, even George, and you're supposed to keep in touch with all of them. Even though your steps are still as heavy as you thought, as your thoughts, you're done letting your doubts and worries paralyze you. Paradise, it's too late to run. Yeah, no, Natalie is definitely a spy. Even though your steps are as heavy as your thoughts, you're done letting your doubts and worries paralyze you. At some point, you have to at least try to lead as normal a life as you can muster. And it all starts, as ridiculous as it sounds, with going out for groceries. Another day, another walk down the familiar streets of your hometown. The sun's out, the sky's as pink as ever, some birds are chirping high on the roofs. And most people still give you weird looks as you pass by, as usual. Hey, look! It's that android! Quick! Snap a photo! Ah, fuck! It's looking right at me! Dude. Really? I don't even have eyes to look at you with. You whisper to yourself as you try your best to ignore their very audible mutterings. 
You'd think people would have learned by now not to speak so loud when you're right in hearing distance. And yet... Could also be that your bionic hearing is better than you gave it credit for. Mary never mentioned anything about that before, but it sounds like something she'd do. Right behind your back, that is. You shake your head at the thought, not wanting to waste any more time debating the topic in your head. It's like human's heart. I've been thinking about playing the human heart. The human's heart. I've been thinking about playing it. Like, it, it would be like a stream. It would be like a stream. I, I, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm already, like, trying to figure out because I feel like I feel like we're going to be done with Tennis Ace soon. I feel like we're going to be done with Tennis Aces soon. Tennis Ace soon. Um, like, like, another month we'll be done with it. Um, like, like another couple months, we'll be done with it. Um, I'm already figuring out games to put on there. Um, I have, I, I, I'm, I'm working on a list already. This is, this is not going to be a Twitter poll. It is going to be a YouTube poll. We are going to play with YouTube community. Um, I, the list so far is, um, what you call it? That, that one, um, Minotaur Hotel. Journal. And that's it so far. And I'll figure it out when I get to it. You shake your head at the topic, not wanting to waste any more time debating the topic in your head. Today's not going to be the same as the last few days. You're going to make sure of that. By going to the grocery store. You leave the swarms of passerby behind and keep heading onwards. Trying to shut out both the outside world and your own thoughts while you focus on your self-appointed duties. It's good that you headed out when you did, you reckon. Uh, judging by the color of the sky, the stores aren't going to be open for a whole lot longer. Well, not the good ones, anyway. There are a few stores that are open 24-7, but that's only because the, they employ AI-powered AI robots to run the place. Have I ever read Password? I have not read Password. I almost did a couple times, but I never did. And now that you look just like one of their employees, it's probably not a great time to go visit. You already deal with enough identity crisis on a regular basis, as it... Isaac? In the midst of your ponderings, you hear your name uttered by a stranger nearby, right as you're about to cross a gap in the sidewalk. You instinctively turn to face this new potential threat, only to be greeted by a familiar visage. Oh, hi, Nem! Okay. Nem? You're surprised to find your friend out and about in this particular part of town. So late in the day, but the surprise quickly gives way to relief. Fuck! Fuck. Alright, alright, alright. Am I going to be speaking in an uwu voice? Am I going to start speaking in an uwu voice? Like, like, it, I could either read it as, Hey, how are you doing? Didn't expect to run into you all of a sudden. Instead, it would be like, Hey, how are you doing? Didn't expect to run into you all of a sudden. Fuck. Me neither. Haven't seen you in ages. Um, ages? Hasn't it only been a few days since we last spoke? Well, it sure felt like ages. Haven't heard from you since, since you came to my place. I thought you died again. Uh, or worse. All right, sure. Your friend always did have a penchant for the dramatic. And no wonder he's working as a streamer now. He does raise a good point, though. You really haven't done your best to keep up with your other friends ever since you came back. Hardly ideal behavior, especially coming from someone whom Nem thought was, who Nem thought dead until last week. S sorry about that. I didn't mean to make you worry. Honestly, I haven't been doing all that great. Had a rough time last Sunday, and my mood's been shit ever since. Plus, I didn't want to bother you on a weekday. You seemed really busy between your waiter job and your streaming career, and I didn't want to get in the way hey it's cool i was joking you're fine you don't have to apologize for needing some time to yourself sometimes you forget that you're a furry i mean i mean for, for me it's it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of hard for me to forget that i'm a furry just just look just look at the title you just have to look at the title of the screen. Of the stream. You just have to look at the title of the stream and you will see why I can ne why I will never forget that I'm a furry. You're fine. You don't have to apologize for needing some time to yourself. Happens to everybody. 
So, like, what have you been doing these past few days? Just r and ring at home? Uh, something like that. Yeah. And you? Just done with work, I assume. Not quite. I actually clocked out about an hour ago, give or take a few minutes. I got home pretty quick, but then I realized a little too late that I was running low on groceries. Home deliveries are pretty pricey these days, so I'm going shopping on my own real quick. Damn, really? I guess we do share a single brain cell between the two of us. <laughs> Nem's turn with the brain cell got skipped. Fuck, oh no. Uh, what? You realize a little too late that you wondered that silly thought out loud for your friend to hear. You and your dumb mouth, you suppose. Yeah, that came out wrong. What I meant was... That you're going out for groceries too? <laughs> oh god, I, I, I need to read password. I need to read password. I need to read it. Um... Mom said it's my turn with the brain cell! Mom said it's my turn on the Xbox! Well, um, next time I die, you, you can you can have the Xbox and the brain cell. <gasps> really? This is precisely why I should not have access to the internet. <laughs> oh, shit. Fortunately, Nem's quick on the uptake. No thanks to decades of having to deal with your nonsense. You breathe a sigh of relief at this embarrassment he just avoided you. Yeah, that's right. We both have the same idea, it seems. Though I have to ask, what are you doing in this part of town? I'm pretty sure there are plenty of supermarkets near your place on the other side. Yeah, but that's the thing. They're on the rich side of town, and the prices there are a little... Uh, the... F the fuzzy dragon visibly shivers as though recounting a dreadful memory. Excessive. Well, that's not hard to believe. Rich as the other side of town may be, it does have a tendency to make your wallet a lot poorer. Give them a controller that's not plugged in. No! No! See, like, all... See, like, me and my siblings... We are gamers. I do not know about one of my older siblings, but no. We are all gamers, so we would... Very quickly realize that a controller's not on or plugged in. Like, they would hand us the controller, it's it's not plugged in, and we'd be like... Like, like that. Oh god, my, my, my fingers are dry. I need to moisten them later. For good reason, of course. The difference in quality between similar stores on opposite ends of Bloomberg is often rather stark. And now that your friend seems to mind... I'm heading to a small store nearby, near the 230th. Stuff there's real cheap, and it's not far off from home. Oh, that place. Now it's your turn to shudder as you picture that place in your head, which you'd only dared visit once. I don't know, that place never really vibed with me. Nem is an acquired taste. He is. Like, like I like his energy. Like, he's just like... Oh, I'm doing my own thing! I don't know, that place never really vibed with me. I went there once to fetch some food real quick, and the eggs I bought for my pasta have practically spoiled midway home. Really? Sheesh, that's harsh. Well, I'm sure it's fine. I just need, I just need some quick emergency rations to get me through the rest of the week. I wasn't planning on buying anything fresh anyway. Good lord! <laughs> that sounds even worse. Does he even hear himself when he speaks? As confident as your friend sounds, the idea of him buying his food from a place like that doesn't sit well with you. Oh, while you might have become immune to all the hazards of food poisoning, your friend most certainly has not, and maybe you should politely remind him of it. Ah, what, what's going on? Ah, ah. Look, I get where you're coming from, but the shops here are just the worst. Trust me on that. Unless you want to spend the next week hunched over in your bathroom, I suggest we go do our shopping elsewhere. There's a big supermarket on 15th Avenue near the old park. I was heading there just now. You want to come with? 
Your friend looks unsure all of a sudden, his gaze briefly darting away from yours. Uh, are you sure? Isn't that place a little expensive? I mean, kind of, but it's not that bad. Plus, if the prices really are too high, I could always lend you some cash to make up the difference. N no way! I, I mean, I could never ask that of you. Hey, don't sweat it. I really don't mind. We have a lot of lost time to make up for. After all, I really don't mind spending some more of it with you. In fact, I look forward to it. Your friend doesn't seem too thrilled about your proposal for whatever reason, but it doesn't take long for him to give in nonetheless. I don't want you to feel like you owe me anything, but I guess I could use the company after all. I'm glad to hear that. It really has been ages since we last went since we last went anywhere together. <laughs> that that's his voice. It's not a fancy restaurant or old or an old style arcade, but I'm sure we'll have a good time anyway. Same here. I'll leave the way. And so, with a chatty friend at your side, you resume your mundane journey to the supermarket. The endless whispers and mutterings of the people around you, as well as the sounds of the town in its entirety, are quickly drowned out by the dragon's sheer energy and enthusiasm, and the myriad of topics he wishes to inquire you about. Okay. You almost don't notice the time ticking away, and your surroundings rapidly change. Nah. Nah. Nem's a femboy. Ah! The nice side of Bloomberg isn't that far away from the bad side, and yet it feels like an entirely different city all the same. Gaudy stores, beautiful villas, solid infrastructure, perhaps not as technologically advanced as New Relay, but a relative paradise for its residents nonetheless. Nem's got that non-binary energy. You're not as familiar with your you're not as unfamiliar with your surroundings as Nem is, having lived here for the vast majority of your life. But even you struggle to find something unseemingly unseemly in this beauty in this beautiful, almost sparkling place. Is this what the poor side of town would look like? Had the wealthy mayors of the past fifty years only dropped a few pennies the opposite way every once in a while? You know nothing about this specific novel? You could read it. Or, or, you could watch my playthrough of it on YouTube. Shameless plug over. Or is the other half town simply a lost cause because of rehabilitation? And this neighborhood is merely a window into an impossible alternate reality? Perhaps you're taking, thing, taking this a little too seriously, all things considered. Uh, best to put your wandering thoughts to a halt for now, before your friend starts thinking you're ignoring him. By the way, everything alright with your sister? Nem immediately turns upon hearing your question, looking a little bothered by it. Oh shit, hang on. Hold up. Hold up. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Ah! My back is hurting from this chair I'm sitting on. Where's the Tylenol? If I lay down flat on the floor, that usually kind of fixes it. My back is ten types of fucked up. I swear to God, it is like, it is like, fucked up. Hang on. Sort by newest. Oh, f fuck yeah. Fucking paw print press. Taking all my money, I'm gonna have to order that at some point. Fucking paw print press, taking all my goddamn money. Uh huh? You mean you may? Yeah, her. Last time I saw her, she seemed pretty overwhelmed. I hope she's doing okay. He's even doing the femboy pose. Uh, C-O-R, what's that? What's C-O-R? What is that? I hope she's okay. She's doing okay. She's fine. So he says. 
And that's all he says. Oh, core. I have not. That is, this is the first I'm hearing of it. And not exactly reassuring, all things considered, but the uncertain look on Nem's face is enough to convince you not to pry any further. Seeing as though you're not going to get any further with him on this topic, you quickly decide to move the conversation onto something else. A anyway, thinking back, it's been quite a while since the two of us went out together like this, hasn't it? And Nemrin suddenly furrows his brow in wonder, though his faint smile hints that his musings are a little happier now. It sure has, hasn't it? Oh, when was the last time we... Oh, now I remember. It was it was right as the college year was about to begin, wasn't it? Your smile visibly widens as a storm of pleasant memories rolls into your mind, as if on reflex. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, we were running around town searching for our missing books, weren't we? God, we took forever to find them all. Ugh, don't get me started on that. We almost went insane looking for all that useless junk. All the schools we went through before college used e-books like every other school on Earth. But for some reason, Bloomberg College still uses physical textbooks. Whose idea even was it? No way they did that to come down on costs. So what gives? Hmm. Maybe the teachers there were all super old-timey? I could believe that. Well, with half of them looking like they woke up in a coffin the day before school started. <laughs> God damn! Nem's got no chill. <laughs> I could believe that. Well, with half of them looking like they woke up in a coffin the day before school started. God damn! In spite of your best efforts to stay composed, you can't help but visibly cringe upon hearing your friend's quip, prompting an immediate concerned reaction from Nem. D did I say something wrong? No, no, you're fine. It was a nice joke. I just need some more time to get accustomed to this kind of humor again. I usually hear people mention me coming back from the dead in very negative terms these days. Ah, like very aggressive laughing noises. Hey, why didn't you say so sooner? I would have stopped if only you told me. Hang on, let me let me look up core. Will my phone let me unlock it? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Core itch IO by Team Ether. Okay, it looks interesting. It it looks interesting. I am going to have to check this out. I am going to have to check it out. Is it going to be my new favorite visual novel? I have no clue. That honor belongs to Echo and Extracurricular Activities as it currently stands, not Ad Astra because Ad Astra is slightly overrated. Just, just slightly. It's, it's a really good visual novel, but Ad Astra is a little overrated. It's good. It has its weak points, but it's good. The anger in the dragon's voice is suddenly dialed to 11, taking you by surprise. Well, I didn't want to stop you. There's nothing wrong with the jokes themselves. I just... Too late! I'm never telling them again! But... Not a chance! I... Not in a million years. <laughs> Faced with your friend's impenetrable stubbornness, you find yourself unable to do anything but sign defeat. Really, you don't have to go out of your way like that for me. Are you crazy? Of course I do! That's what friends are all about! Plus, I... I already know you're pretty sensitive to insults and such. I remember when everyone used to make fun of you for still not having your own phone in elementary school. <laughs> oh god. I don't know if that voice is. I don't know if that voice is. Yeah, I... I remember that, too. Chasing the bad memories out of your head, you try to refocus your attention onto your friend. Anyway, I guess this doesn't really excuse me for not realizing this sooner. 
I get the feeling you already get enough shit from others as it is. I really don't want to be part of the problem, too. Yep. Stubborn indeed your friend is. In a decidedly good way. Trust me, you're not a part of any problem. Thanks, Nem. The stars on Nem's white and purple cheeks tinge red all of a sudden. And noticing this, he immediately turns to avoid your gaze, feeling quite embarrassed all of a sudden. <laughs> what? Don't mention it. It just... Doing what friends do. And stuff. He clears his throat rather loudly as he tries to change the subject. You know, thinking back on it, I think you were the only one in our class who even knew how to read one of those old books. Oh god, there's like... Ah! That voice actually hurt my throat. Hang on, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a drink real quick. I'm gonna get a drink real quick. I'm, I'm getting a drink real quick. Hang on. Got, got Dr. Pepper. Uh... Ah, that's good. It burns the throat in the right way. I need to stop doing those, like, sort of, like, growly voices. The price to pay for shits and giggles. Yes! Ah! All I'm doing is murdering my vocal cords. That is all I'm doing. I remember struggling a lot even trying to open that huge history textbook. That's only because you bought it from that Labrador graduate who got all the pages stuck with peanut butter. You weren't that hopeless. And reading a physical book isn't all that different from reading a digital one. I think you and the others just panicked at the new method is all. Well, you didn't. And I thought that was pretty cool at the time. Uh, that's only because I grew up with that kind of stuff. And there's hardly anything cool about it. No, and that's literally all I had. Your gaze remains fixed onto the floor, almost as if you're trying to lose your stream of thought into the myriad of cracks on the sidewalk beneath you. Uh, judging by the tone in his voice, Nem appears to be doing something similar himself. Yeah, your parents were a bit old-timey like that too, weren't they? Honestly, your bullies weren't the only ones wondering how you never had a phone until you were 16. I still can't believe I had to teach you how to use one of, how to use one my- Ow! As a result of neither of you looking where you were going, Nemrin's forehead is suddenly bonked by a black and white ball that apparently flew in front of- flew in from a lawn across the road. Are you alright? Uh, I'm fine! I barely felt that! Are you sure? It's not gonna end up swelling like- of course not! Don't start acting like my mom! The dragon's gaze veers towards the source of your discussion, which managed to get itself stuck on stuck under a car. The life cycle of the average playing ball, you suppose. I'll go get that real quick, okay? Alright? It's all shits and giggles until someone giggles and shits. Bro, my dad says that. You go and look for the owners. Bro, bro, this. My dad says that. Nem doesn't wait for your response as he immediately sets out to perform his duty, leaving you to your own. You reckon you should probably be upset at having something like that, like this, forced upon you all of a sudden. But you're really not, truth be told. You're just happy to help out, you, you suppose, like Nem is. <clears throat> ah. You proceed to scout your surroundings, wondering who could possibly toss a toy so carelessly into the busy road. Not long after the answer quickly presents itself, a small group of children begin to begin to pour out from the nearby park and into the street, their gazes as fearful and uncertain as the rest of the onlookers you've met today. All but one, that is. Hey, mister! Could you throw that back our way? The rest of the kids hastily cover the young boy's mouth with their hands, like likely fearing retribution from either you or their supervisors. Or maybe they're scared you'll kill them and take their place as, like that one host from today's talk show. Hard to know for certain these days. Upon noticing the kids, but not their worried expressions, it seems, Nem's annoyed frown softens considerably, and he eagerly promises them his help. The devil's holding on by Blaster Jacks. I have not. I have not listened to that. Sure, 
Oh, one second, just gotta... The dragon puts the ball down on the ground and makes as if to kick it, but his precarious stance and ten steps of wind-up are anything but encouraging. You hastily stop him before he can send the... <laughs> before he can send the poor ball deep into the stratosphere. Here, let me... With practiced finesse, you gently kick the ball forward and upward with your paw, like you've done countless times before. It flies over the busy street far above the windshields of nearby cars at a controlled speed until it gently lands in the outstretched arms of one of the boys. I got it! I got it! Dude, that was a sick kick! The child who grabbed the ball, the same that asked for your help earlier, turns to look at you with a genuinely kind smile on his face. Thanks, Mr. Robot, sir! Mr. Robot, sir? You, got, you get called something new every day, indeed. As he heads back to the game he was playing with his friends, you can hear him approaching another one of his buddies with a proud look on his face. I told you, Wally! He's a lot nicer than Mom says he is! Aww. With that situation resolved, and noticing the faint smile on your face as you turn away from the playing children, Nem returns to where he left off. Then again, you were also way better at playing ball than I was. The blush on your face briefly intensifies. Well, I got a lot of practice with it thanks to George. George, your cousin? <clears throat> ah. Yeah, my younger cousin. Then, swiftly disappears. What with me having nearly no access to electronics and him often being grounded, we, have, we had to find new ways to have fun when he visited. I guess I had no choice but to get good at what little I could play. Yikes. No wonder you always had more fun with my games than I did. Sounds harsh, not gonna lie. Yeah, can't argue with that. Uh, but hey, harsh as the circumstances were, we had fun with what we had. Tons of fun for that matter. It's a pleasant memory for sure, albeit pleasant doesn't quite do it justice. It's more so warm, sweet, alluring, intoxicating. Before you even know it, the dam is breached and more memories of your childhood come pouring in like a tidal wave. Morning spent screwing around at your school desks, afternoon spent studying for tests together, evenings spent experimenting with the wildest games you could find, the days you spent babysitting George while his family was away, the afternoons you'd spend with your mom at the park on the weekends, the gentle touch of dad's hand on your forehead as you fought a fever in bed, random memories, good and bad alike, all clashing together like dissonant waves in an overwhelming dish. You can't feel the heat without the cold aftertaste as well, the sweet without the sour. It feels rather nice, reliving your past like this. And terrible, too. I miss those days. Uh-huh! Nem turns to face you with a confused look in his eyes. Can't really blame him for it. You've, you've sort of gone on a silent tangent in your head and left him behind until now. S sorry I was just busy thinking about something. You take a moment to reorganize your thoughts, not wanting to sound completely out of left field to your friend. But does not ever cry? Google! Google, where's my phone? Uh, it's in my pocket. Hold on, hold on. I, I, I need to know! I need to know! Okay, okay. Okay. Can protogens cry? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. They can! They can! Haha! <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm just feeling nostalgic for the past is all. Everything was just so much simpler back then. It's so much brighter. And even though I still had no clue what my future was going to look like, I at least felt like there was an invisible direction to my life. That had to be better with than whatever I'm feeling right now. Then again, that invisible direction ended up being a red herring as well. Your path ended where that wretched tumor began, with no other end in sight than the cold embrace of death. It's almost embarrassing in a way. Whereas others like Nem- <sighs> ah! Whereas others like Nem were given a chance to follow their dreams and make something of their lives, you were given nothing but regret, and one final chance of course. And even though the question that bothers you more than any other on most days is, did it work? Sometimes you can hear another voice in your head wonder if you deserved that chance to begin with. Hmm. 
Hmm. You really feel that way? Uh-huh. You once again fall from the clouds as Nem counters your argument. Right as you were about to have yet another quarrel with yourself in your head. We're gonna leave off here tonight. Is it a mistake? Maybe. I don't know. Alright. Stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.